Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Expansion Point. Again, The Expansion Point takes place every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, here on the Akashic Academy. So we have a very interesting topic, kind of a serious topic, that we're going to be discussing for today's episode. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this topic is because this is something that has come up for a lot of people. I've been working with many thousands of clients uh, from all over the world for the past 10 years, and quite a few people have had these uh, particular types of quote-unquote entity attachments. And so that's really what we're going to be talking about today is entity attachments and how we can release them as well too, because it is quite uh, something that is quite uh, common that I find around uh, people who are very psychic, intuitive, emotionally sensitive. Really no one, um, it, you don't have to be a certain designation to really have these particular types of attachments. They are something that's very real, and it's something that we are able to also uh, remedy. So that's what we're going to be talking about today for everybody. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I do have a PowerPoint presentation here. Okay. So, entity attachments are caused by parasitic astral beings that feed on human energy, specifically emotions. When one is vulnerable on a highly emotional level, this can create attachments where entities continue to fuel negative influences to the individual, causing them greater emotional calamity. When one sees their own energy field with attachments, they would find cords attached to lacerations or open wounds within the energy field affecting the emotional and mental body. These entities that latch on through space-time, time-space, now receive enough emotional energy to manifest themselves in some form within our reality. They can often be seen as shadow beings or projections as they can't manifest a full physical form. Their, pre their presence is mainly apparition. So again, guys, with me bringing this information to you, it's not to scare you in any particular way. Believe me, there are some people that don't have attachments at all, but this is something that is to be made aware of because you may meet some people who have particular attachments. And uh, usually you can find them to be quite agitated a bit, right? You can't really even get a, a conversation going with them. They can look very, very negatively, very bitter, you know, be very bitter about the world. Uh, some of them can almost be seen as energy vampires, right? Where they're basically just bullying you or trying to take a lot of your energy in that way. And if you had a specific type of inner auric vision and you could actually see their energy field, you would see these cords. They're just like uh, long kind of black cords that just attach to these kind of open gaping um, wounds, you could say, to the energy field. And this has to do again with emotional compromise. It goes back into a certain scientist named Dr. Emoto. And what he did was water crystal experiments. And so when he blessed the, uh, the frozen water crystals, he was noticing that they were in a very harmonic geometry, very peaceful, very loving, very beautiful, and uh, in a state of equilibrium. When you're basically saying, I hate you, you know, I despise you, to these other water crystals uh, for a certain length of time, often like 30 days, then you'll notice that they become degraded. They feel like they're just broken up in that way. Well, that would represent our own energy field, right? If we bring a lot of love to ourselves, we crystallize ourselves harmoniously. When we feel very down upon ourselves, when we feel very bitter, when we think the world is just an absolute mess, and we're an absolute mess, and everybody's an absolute mess, and we're just thinking on ourselves on such a negative degree, we start breaking up the geometry within our energy field. <clears throat> so it's kind of like having an iron shield here with a bunch of holes in it, right? Trying to avoid all of these arrows. Of course, the arrow is going to find its mark. It's going to puncture the shield, and it's going to hit you. Well, that's the same thing with your energy field in that way, is that when it is being compromised on a highly negative level, it becomes exposed. <clears throat> and there are certain entities that are able to come into our dimension, and it's like they can smell these people from a mile away. And so they come in, and they basically attach themselves uh, to this person. And what they basically do will often do be uh, negative influences upon this person, and then this person buys into what is being received, and they just go into a deeper level of depression, of anxiety, of anger, of fear. And so this is something that is very, very real. 
Many people have talked to me about shadow people or shadow beings. And again, they just look like silhouettes of humanoid-like beings, but they're just completely shadow, right? So you can often find them standing in the corners of your bedroom. Some people can find them standing in areas of the house. Some can be outside the house as well, too. Uh, so these beings do exist. They do happen. But as mentioned in the slide, that these are manifestations. These are projections. They can't take on a physical form in this reality. And so what they do is they create this apparition, this projection of themselves, to basically give some particular type of presence as a result to the emotions that they're feeding off people. Right? So in, in many ways, uh, people that are going through these very deeper level states of depression are going through feeding grounds. Right? And these become feeding grounds for these particular types of entities. The reason being is because humanity has the deepest contrast of emotion of any other being in the universe. We're the most emotionally contrasting beings in existence, which means that we have the most powerful emotions, the most powerful will of any other being that exists. That's how powerful we are. So this is why we're basically known as the God race, <clears throat> human, God man, God woman, right? That's, that's who we are. <clears throat> and because we may feel that we get really down on ourselves and we feel like we're just, you know, kicking ourselves down as well, we get very emotional, we get fearful, we get anxious, we get angry, we get apprehensive, then you become a particular quote-unquote target for this because you're holding up this shield that has all these holes in it and you're being punctured. So we want to be very aware of our emotional states. And like I said, I'm, I know that not everybody gets this. But there is a lot of people that do, and again, especially the emotionally sensitive people. So the type of attachment entities, what type of entities connect to us uh, that do these things? Some of them can be human, human projection. Some of these entities are indeed human. They can actually do astral projection. Uh, a lot of them can be, you know, moving much more to a negative influence and they can feed off, off other humans in that particular way as a means of kind of feeding their own kind of energy vampiristic ways. Jinn is another one. Uh, ancient interdimensional beings commonly spoken of in Arabic history. We could almost see them as genies. Uh, basically in the legends they referred to them as being born out of smokeless fire. Right? So they represent uh, these interdimensional beings that can come in and they once had dominion over the earth a very very long time ago but when the human presence came upon the planet uh, you could say that our creator gods so to speak said that you are meant to get along with these humans if you cannot coexist them with them you will not be here and so they refused and so the jinn were basically banished and went into another dimensional earth where they exist and this is also given a lot of them um, hard feelings with the idea of the humans. Many of them blame the humans for taking their homes away. Now again, not all gyms are like this. There are some that may be uh, cooperative together with humans, but many of the gin in that sense have a pretty uh, harsh view on humanity. And so again, you can look at them from the ancient Arabic history like uh, King Solomon, who basically imprisoned the 72 jinn within a vessel, right? So you can look back to them in that particular time, but they still do exist today. A lot of them are quote-unquote shapeshifters, changelings, uh, and some of them can even walk our earth. So that's, a, that's an entire topic for another time, I would say. <clears throat> the third one is Draco, okay? Regressive reptilian beings from the Draco constellation committed only to dominance and rule. And so the Draco themselves can manifest some particular type of form and they can bring in, uh, they can sometimes even just appear as themselves. They can appear as these kind of large gargoyle, you know, reptilian beings. Some of them can even appear somewhat human to the idea. Some can appear as dragons, right? There's many different ways of how the Draco themselves uh, can appear. So they do have different versions of themselves. They're not just one, you know, full out obvious reptilian type being. They can take other particular forms as well too. The fourth is dark fae, okay? Often fairies or elves or other dark fae folk that detest humans and wish to feed off their energy. Again, there are some particular interdimensional beings that really just do not like humans because they don't like the way that they're treating the planet. They really just don't like the idea that the humans as cosmic visitors are coming upon their own home and are basically 
uh, becoming wards of the earth to help earth elevate into the next density, right? This is, this is uh, sometimes an insult to them, right? Because it's, it's the idea that the fey, the jinn, a lot of them are indigenous to this world. And so when the humans came along, this is all part of uh, uh, visitors that came from the cosmos. That's who we are. We're visitors. And we came to this planet uh, being adopted by the earth as wards. And we are uh, being, being here to help earth evolve, to move into that next level. So she basically uh, receives all of this learning from who we are. And of course, we haven't treated the earth too well. But in a way, that's a blessing in disguise because she's now being much more made aware of what she needs to go through to purge, to release, so that she can move herself up into the next density. But again, there are some of the indigenous folk here, the jinn, the dark fae, uh, that again, really do not like humans. And they will be more than glad to feed off emotional energy from them. Right? And of course, we have AI, artificial intelligence, that operate more as implants or black goo within the body itself. Now again, from a lot of the sessions I've had, extremely rare, right? It's very rare that artificial intelligence or the black goo, in that sense, uh, has come up within a person. A lot of people have asked me, well, Brad, do I have black goo? Do I have AI in that way uh, with them? And I've done, I've checked with the Dronos and uh, the energies that I work with, and a lot of the times, no, we don't. The AI uh, outbreak isn't as intense as many people may believe it is. Some people certainly believe it is, right? But the whole idea is that the quote-unquote, the AI is very choosy. It chooses certain people in that sense, often in positions of power. Um, but basically, if you do notice that you have artificial intelligence, one of the side effects for that is what's known as Morgellons disease. Okay? Morgellons disease, or smart dust in that particular way, uh, gives the impression like there's these fibers under your skin. It almost feels like insects are crawling in your skin. It's very nasty. I met somebody who had uh, Morgellons disease, or the, the, the smart dust. And, uh, of course, one of the recommendations to help release that we're going to be getting into here in a very bit, but yeah, in, in a little bit. But yeah, it's very, very true that these, uh, these AI smart dusts, or black goo as well. So a black goo is a bit of a different phenomenon, but it can be a lot more nasty. It's almost just like the idea is if you would have, like, black tar, right? But there's, like, an intelligence to it, right? You can actually have it caged, and you can approach it, and it'll actually start, you know, trying to leap at you, right? So it's, it's, it's nasty stuff. It's really, really nasty stuff. But it's all artificial intelligence. Nanotech, you could say. Uh, I refer to it as rogue AI. And um, the Draco used this a lot as well, too, through cybernetic transhumanism. But again, these are all big topics that I'm sure we'll talk about in other episodes. Again, my intention isn't to scare anybody here. It's just to give you guys an impression about, you know, what's really happening, you know, what's really going on here, and how, again, we can remedy these things as well, too, as they happen. Okay, so again, Human Projection, Jin, Draco, Dark Fae, AI, just to name a few. There can probably be some others as well here, too, but these are some common ones that we find. So, how do we remedy these attachments? Well, high love states, increased frequency of compassion towards the self. If it's difficult, have others around you to assist. So it's very, very important that you are working together with compassionate energy. You want to restore your energy field, right? Just like Dr. Emoto was able to discover through the love, love crystal experiments, water crystal experiments, is that when you're putting love into these water crystals, they become purified. These entities can't go near you. They can't even touch you. If you are in that higher state of resonance, if you're in that frequency where your aura is rep uh, repairing itself. Okay, so uh, enchanting charms, objects in your home that hold a high charge of Christed consciousness. Okay, so you could have a ring, uh, you could have a picture, you could basically have any particular type of item you want. But what you're doing is you're quote unquote consecrating or you're enchanting it with uh, a high charge of Christed energy. What this means is that you're going into what you would consider to be your most blissful state imaginable. You're basically going into a pure state of love ecstasy and you're uh, completely consecrating that energy into the object itself. That object therefore becomes a Christed consciousness beacon and now you're able to hang it up around your bedroom and your living room, place it on uh, a drawer, a shelf, whatever it may be, and now you're actually getting these uh, enchanted objects that are keeping out these entities. And these entities can't even go near it. If they go near it, they're basically getting burned, 
right? So the whole idea is if they're not actually uh, willing to move up into the higher levels of love themselves, then this light basically casts them out, right? So that is the idea of enchanting charms, objects in your home, right? We learned a lot about this in ancient magic as well, too, is that uh, people would basically just consecrate objects. They'd put uh, Christed consciousness energy in it, and they'd hang it up on their walls. They'd put it around their place to basically ward off evil spirits, right? So this is the exact same thing here. Something that's been used for thousands of years that we can still use today. Okay, so another compassionate prayer, meditation, right? So really putting in loving prayer to yourself, you know, praying to the Christ consciousness within yourself, the God source energy within yourself, meditating on that energy and imagining that energy is like a field. Your love energy is like a field that's just expanding, a bubble. And you're making it brighter and brighter and larger and larger and thicker and thicker relating to the love energy. And then you're rotating it, okay? So then you're rotating it in a clockwise direction. Right? So you want to basically manifest it into the physical. So there's two direct directions that we know, counterclockwise and clockwise. Whenever we're basically counterclockwise in rotation, then what we're doing is we're releasing something back into the ethers. When we're looking to ground something in, we use it in a clockwise direction. Okay, So you're basically expanding your field in meditation with great love. Again, you're thickening the field. It's filled with so much love and you're rotating it in a clockwise direction, and you feel it just magnetizing into your room. It's magnetizing into your walls, it's magnetizing into your bed, it's magnetizing into your entire environment. And the more that you're able to do this, those entities can't even go near you, right? It's just your pure Christ consciousness, and so they won't even try to go near you in that way. So that's another thing that you can try. Uh, banishment rituals. One is knowing uh, the lower, uh, sorry, the lesser banishment ritual of the pentagram. Okay, this too is an ancient magic practice. This involves working with pen pentagrams. Okay, uh, I have done this in the past as well too. Uh, there's a book called Modern Magic that you guys can look at, uh, and it teaches you this particular uh, practice, and it works sensationally because what you're doing is you're invoking the archangels, you're invoking you know the the connections to God's source and you're putting it into these pentagrams. And you're saying the names of God in the many ways that it has come about. And then you're basically creating this circle. And this circle in that sense is now being invoked by the four, four archangels. Uh, so again, that's something of a more of advanced practice, but banishment rituals do work really good depending upon the person. If they're very well studied, if they know what they're doing, yes, you can absolutely completely enchant your entire space and these entities won't come anywhere near you. Actually, they'll be freaked out <laughs> to even try to come near you because you're basically having the essence of the archangel standing right next to you, right? So if they even came in, they would basically be banished right away. Okay, light frequency enchanted with loving energy placed in areas of the body, burning away attachments with love energy. Okay, so frequency energy. So basically, we could have, for example, golden light coming into our body, right? If we're feeling that there's a lot of uh, kind of like a lot of pain around the liver or around the heart or around the chest, then that's where we're basically aiming these light frequencies. Okay, so we're charging up these light frequencies. And what you want to do is you're just seeing like a golden orb just above your head, of maybe about a couple feet. And what you're doing is you're putting all of that strong intent of Christ consciousness, right, of your pure loving God source into that golden orb. And now as you feel that golden orb cascading this energy into you, you're directing it and you're putting it into areas of the body that you feel are compromised based upon states of attachment. So usually sometimes it can be feeling of soreness. It can just feel like tightness, stiffness in areas of the body as well too. So if you're feeling sore, if you're feeling tight, if you're feeling again very stiff, right? Sometimes there can even be aches and pains as well too. Place it in those areas, okay? Even if you're not too sure if you have an attachment, do this on a daily basis anyways. It works very, very well. It clears your energy field like crazy, okay? So again, you're just enchanting that golden etheric orb that is above your head, and you're putting as much pure love and pure joy into that as possible. And now you're allowing it to cascade into your body, <clears throat> and you're directing it into the body. And you're just breathing it in, breathing it out, and as you exhale, you're just imagining that it's infusing into your body. So you're taking this light and you're infusing it into your grid. You're infusing it into your energy field and you're even infusing it into the physical body. Right? The cells are absorbing it. Okay, So that's another thing you can use is working with the light frequency orb. 
so if we do have something relating to AI, then basically what we want to work with is electromagnetic pulse technology or Faraday cages. Okay, so there are certain people that have been able to design Faraday cages, and they basically work with electromagnetic pulse. And many people will be treated often with Morgellons disease, is that they will actually go into these Faraday cages and they will actually uh, experience these electromagnetic pulses and this helps to completely uh, deactivate, disable the AI that may be contained within a person. So like I said, this is not common, okay? Like I said, out of the thousands of sessions I've done from people, I'd say maybe only a few have actually had actual artificial intelligent uh, implants placed in. So like I said, uh, Morgellons disease is one possible way. Um, black goo is another possible way. Black goo is quite rare though, right? But it does exist. So again, these are this is all just information to keeping you guys aware. I'm not saying all of you guys have AI in you, right? Uh, but it's it's the idea that you're really just being made aware of this, uh, in case you do see this from other people as well. Love energy brings you into a higher frequency where attachment energies cannot coexist with you. As you illuminate yourself and work with your emotions, harmonizing them, there is nothing available for such attachments to feed off of. This is the most effective way to releasing yourself from entity attachments. Okay. So again, just a lot of things to take into consideration with what I'm sharing here with you guys today. Entity attachments are very, very real, right? And so we want to be very aware of that, right? Some people say, oh, you know, maybe it's just something else. Maybe it's just something in this person's head, uh, for example. Sorry, guys, sorry to disappoint you. No, there are entities that come in. They, uh, again, Earth has been their feeding ground for thousands and thousands of years. And just because we're in a modern age doesn't mean that they're not excluded into, into, included into our world anymore, right? They still very much are. The Earth is a honeycomb Earth, and it has pockets within it. And through all of these particular pockets, there are gateways that open up from different interdimensional worlds. So there can be uh, pockets within the sky, there can be pockets within the ground, there can be pockets within caves, there can be pockets all over the place. And through certain forms of orbits, there can be beings that come through these particular pockets into our world. But again, mainly existing as some particular type of projection or apparition. So again, we're just doing our best to be very conscientious of the type of beings that may come together. So this is just a very simple guide to letting you know uh, of the basics of some particular types of entities that do this. And someone may ask, well, Brad, why do they do this? Why are they doing this to us? And I said, well, basically, a lot of these beings are parasitical in nature. They're like mosquitoes in that way, right? Someone will basically ask us, well, why, why is a mosquito taking our blood? Because it's in their nature to do, right? That's how they're programmed. Some of these beings, in that sense, are energy mosquitoes or energy vampires. They will come in and they will basically leech off of uh, a person's energy field. And they will leech off their emotions and they'll feed off their emotions as well, too. And like I said, that's how you know when a person's in very compromised. They're extremely sensitive. They're easily triggerable to whatever you try to say. You can't even really have a conversation with them. They're, again, like energy vampires, right? And they'll, they'll just belittle you. You don't have to do anything. They'll just get mad at you and they'll just start flaming at you, right? <laughs> that is often a case of indication that you know this person is highly attached, okay? Has a lot of attachments to them. So what you want to do is keeping your energy clear as well, too, by looking into the exercises that were just uh, mentioned as well, too. So just be aware of this. Keep yourself in the know, right? Pass this video on. Share this with other people. This is something that is a very real thing that's happening. And like I said, talk to a lot of people throughout the years that have had experiences like this. And I've attempted to help them out, and some have been able to use that. Some people are just so absolutely freaked out that they don't know what to do. And they just break themselves down. And in that sense, you, there's not really much you can do for them, right? You want to help them, but they're not accepting your help and they're freaking out. And all you can really do is just bless them from afar, hope that they will get through this. But this, again, is a really uh, critical thing. Uh, people go into insane asylums because they're going through constant psychic attack. They're going through constant entity attachments, entity implants, right? So this is a very, very real thing. This is why people go into those asylums. They go into uh, mental, mental, mental case facilities and all of that. Right, so we want to do our best just to educate people, tell them exactly what's happening, because there are answers, there are remedies to these situations. And it is scary. It certainly is a scary thing. I've had a couple of attachments myself in the past as well, too. But utilizing these particular techniques, I've been able to work through them. 
Um, and again, it's been my experience one, uh, one time with um, the inner earth beings known as the Delphi. And I've had a certain attachment in that way as well too. And it was a freaky situation, but again, you just offer love to that being. You kind of look at that being, no matter how hideous they are, and you see them with the love of a newborn child. And that's a very difficult thing to do, but you have to really kind of train yourself to do that. And that's <laughs> what I've been doing, is really training myself to do that. And so, um, since that time, no, there has certainly not been any particular attachments that I'm aware of that has come through me, because I'm working on and, and bringing that love energy, crystallizing that love energy on a daily basis. And you want to do that with your field. You want to keep your field healthy. You want to keep your energy body on a healthy level as much as you can. Um, through your diet, through your exercise, through your mentality, through your emotions, etc. You want to make sure that you're keeping a healthy uh, point of being every particular chance that you get. And what that starts with is following simple acts of kindness on a daily basis, complimenting yourself, loving yourself, appreciating yourself, looking into the simple things, and really putting appreciation towards yourself, towards that, and now you have all this love brewing, and it's going to naturally radiate towards others. Okay? So let me just look down the list to see if we just have any quick questions here. If everybody else is good. Okay, so one from Kendra here is, how do I know if something is negatively affecting me? Well, you're basically looking at emotional sensitivity or over emotional sensitivity. When you're very agitated, when you feel like there's just, when you're basically just spewing all kinds of uh, emotions everywhere, right? If a person really just says hi to you and you're getting triggered, right? When you're overly triggered is the idea of a particular type of attachment, okay? It's just, it's very strong oversensitivity. It's very strong overburdened emotional um, catastrophe, I guess you could say, or calamity, right? You're just feeling over emotional about everything. Everything's affecting you. Everything's making you mad. Everything's making you afraid. Everything's making you apprehensive, right? All of these things are just spewing at you left, right, and center. And you're noticing that there are gaps, there are gaping holes within your energy field, right? So when that happens, you want to work to bring yourself into a state of calmness. If you feel that you're having difficulty with this, Find some people in that sense who may be able to help you in that way, right? Who are helping you out, who are counseling you, who are working together with you, helping out with you in that particular way. Certainly I can be one of those guys, but of course I'm at a distance. Uh, what I'd usually recommend is somebody who, who's local, right? Who can come by and talk to you, who can kind of feel out your house, right? Making sure that there's no environmental uh, impurities within the house as well too. Clearing the house as well too. If you're not too sure what to do, they can educate you. They can work together with you. So, you know, usually with, with a person that has a lot of these high attachments, I would certainly recommend someone local that you would come through. I can certainly do some work where I am. But again, I'm not walking around your house, at least not in the physical. <laughs> uh, and I can certainly give you instructions and certainly give you ideas about what you can do to help remedy this. But uh, if you're not too sure what to do, ask for help, right? Whatever it is. If it's a human coming in, great. If it's your angels, if it's your guides coming through, let them come in as well too. But you want to at least being able to elevate yourself a little bit, right? To a little bit of a higher ground, to a little bit more of a love frequency, right? So you're working on calming yourself, meditation, uh, again, consecrating or bringing enchantments to certain objects of high Christed energy as well, too. Working with crystals, crystals is great as well, too. That can really help also. So again, a lot of stuff, but of course, we don't really have a lot of time to, uh, to go into this since we're almost up out of time right now. But uh, I will definitely see if I can do a follow-up video of this in the upcoming uh, episodes ahead. Uh, Teresa asks, can we send this higher love to people, or do they have to go through this themselves? Well, you can assist them in that particular way, but I'll, I'll cover this, very t this topic real quickly before we depart. Now, basically, if a person is very much in a state of anguish, and you are offering them a lot of love, but all they want to do is be in anguish, <clears throat> what happens is they take that energy from you that was loving <clears throat> and they contaminate it into their own state of anguish, right? This is why I usually say don't really send energy to a person directly when they're going through very, very tough times <clears throat> because what you're actually doing is you're just contributing energy. From your perspective, that certainly has a lot of love to them. From their perspective, they're actually seeing this as anguish and they're actually transmuting that energy, and it's turning more into anguish, right? So if you're going to send them love, send it to their environment. Just kind of surround them with it, right? 
don't bring it directly into them because they will take that emotional energy and they will transform it and they'll make it into anguish they'll make it into hatred i've seen this happen to people right where a, a person says oh my boyfriend's feeling really really bad i just did a whole love spell on him but it felt like it made him even matter right and i said well you got to be careful with that right you don't want to put that energy directly into their being right just surround them with it it's like a little cocoon that's just surrounding them so it's not deeply penetrating them but the environment is now being uh, filled with love in that particular way. So that's what you want to do instead. So this is where I say is that if you really want to send love to a person, send it to them around them, right? If they're understanding what you're doing, if you're saying, I'm going to send love to you now, and they say, okay, great, go ahead and do it, right? This is why, again, we do permission-based healing work uh, in that way. Because again, if a person is very much down in the dumps, and they just hate everything, and they're so mad, and they're so angry, uh, again, a lot of people want to send love directly to that person, and that is harmful, okay? <clears throat> Simply because it's not through you that's creating a lot of that harm, in a way, but you are supplying that energy. You're supplying that excess energy to them. And because they're in that foul state of mood, they will take that energy and they will create it into foulness, and they'll just put more of that into that. So they are creators in their own reality. <clears throat> they're getting all of this excess energy coming into their reality, and they will program it in their own particular way. So again, you're putting it around them, okay? So you're not putting it in them. You're putting it all around them, like a cocoon, in their environment, and just say, bless their space, bless their space. That's what you want to do, right? Just bless their space. And when they start to get into much more of a, a receptive mood, all of that love energy is now surrounding them, and now they'll accept it, right? So now you're not putting it into them. You're putting it into their space, okay? That's what I'd recommend for everybody to do, okay? Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to the expansion point with this uh, particular episode on entity attachments. So again, feel free to pass this video around. It's a very important video, okay? If people you know are going through this, have them watch this video as well, too. You'll also find some other videos about uh, on my YouTube with Adronis as he talks about entity implants and energy leaks as well, too. That's another one I would certainly recommend to check out also. You can find that on my YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash user slash self-empowerment TV, all one word, okay? So check that out as well, too. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me on the Expansion Point for this week, and I'll speak to you all again next week, and I'll speak to you again in another perspective of the now. Take care. Namaste.